we have seen the definition of artificial intelligence it's the branch of uh, computer science that attempts to simulate human intelligence in machines and just not intelligence but also emotional intelligence just not uh, because when it comes to artificial intelligence emotional intelligence is also a part of artificial intelligence just emotion that comes into the artificial intelligence is the result of how much data you have that is that can be correlated to each other so if you have lots of past data that can be correlated to each other the better emotional intelligence uh, mix up will get up so we have seen that uh, artificial intelligence for a machine to be classified as ai it must perform the task given value so you can see here uh it should be able to acquire data and rules and it will make rules on its own as it acquires data it should be knowing like what is because artificial intelligence i told you machine learning is a very important part of artificial intelligence you can assume 80% uh, uh of artificial intelligence is about machine learning only Rest twenty percent is about robotics, clouds, other electronics and computer science related department. Eighty okay. percent is machine learning. So uh, even if we talk about machine learning, um, so I don't have that diagram right now. That's on my Twitter actually. So. Uh, learning regarding learning i have one thing what aspects is differentiating machine learning from uh, the classical programming that we had earlier so let me check out uh, my twitter okay. this one if you look at this one what is the difference between classical programming and machine learning so what happened what used to happen in classical programming we used to have rules we used to have data and then we used to find the answer this is just like one equation is given another equation is given and now with the help of two equation we are trying to find the value of x and y so that's how we have been given how to solve the two equations we know the rules of solving two equations and data is given two equations are given and then we try to find out the value of x and y that is called classical program what is happening with machine learning we have data we have answer and when we make rules actually we don't make rules we make models and when we make rules and models we say that this model gives 95% correct result this model gives 85% correct result so we give a accuracy uh, accuracy matrix surrounding that model and rules and then we attest that with the model so machine learning makes a model and once model is ready we simply give data and we get the answer so we still get the answer but initially we give data and the answer and we make the rules earlier we used to give rules by our human brain our human brain used to give rules and based on that we used to give programming rules data and all and then we used to get the answer and we used to consume that in now we are using data and answers that is already available because they are big data and so much of data lying everywhere we can simply give data and answer and we'll get the rules and now we'll apply the rules to get the real answer in uh, real time answers in future so that is there so that is about machine learning how it is different from classical programming so that's how i and i wanted to exemplify over here
so so when we learn something we acquire data and we make rules then we self correct it right we correct itself without external assistance we do not take any external assistance we self correct it and then it's a reason and we draw conclusions using the rules so with the history of ai you can see here that the turing just is here in 1950 alan turing wrote a paper proposing a test that looked at whether a computer can think like a human being or not so this is this is what was turing test so can machine thinks on so the paper focused on answering the questions can machine think so what do you think as of now can anybody tell me now like whether machine thinks or not after learning the definition of machine learning artificial intelligence everything what do you think can machine think or not you can just uh, answer you can tell answer here also machine can be thinking as of now there is no proof that machine is thinking or machine can think it is only working as per the programming only so it can be classical programming or it is as per the model that has been derived as i discussed in machine learning example but it is working as per the mathematics only it is not going beyond the scope of mathematics when we think as a human being then we can think a author who is writing a book is imagining some instances he can think any odd imagination in his scripture he can think any odd imagination in his scripture machine is not that intelligent as of now chat gpt is there we ask them to write a essay it will write essay but it will take data from somewhere it will take data from some internet it will take data from some blog right it will not write essay on its own it is not thinking it is working as per the program only so machine is not thinking in order for machine to think it has to have life and if it is not supposed to have life then we'll have to prove something that it is something it is having emotion kind of thing just like human then it can think its emotion is totally data machine's emotion is to totally data so if machine is taking any emotionally intelligent decision also then this is because it has rich data rich data library and good algorithms in place that's why it is taking emotionally intelligent decision which is going to allure all of us which is giving which is attracting every human being so that is the thing so machine was not thinking machine is not thinking and probably machine will not think in future unless biotechnology team will some do some wonder and make a machine alive so it depends on biotechnologist to make a machine just like human so if biotechnologist can do something that's another thing but without help of biotechnologist machine cannot think okay so that is one thing so now coming to the father of artificial intelligence so in 1955 John McCarthy coined the term artificial intelligence in a conference at Dartmouth and he was very influential in early development of AI and also helped develop the LISP programming language LISP programming language. 
so this person is actually the artificial uh, father of artificial intelligence there is a joke also associated with this uh, uh, just like uh, a person if if someone has to become a father of some particular technology then he can name that technology name as the name of his son or daughter and then he will be called the father of that, that particular technology so this is the shortcut of becoming the father of a particular technology so that's a joke apart but uh, this person has coined the term artificial intelligence long back in 1955 so that's why this person is called as the father of artificial intelligence now coming to the years after the conference in dartmouth we were most crucial period of ai development and discovery so darp darpa developed computers solved algebra word problems problems proved theorems and learned to talk in english all these developments kept going on between 1956 to 1974 so development was very slow you can just uh, think like 1956 to 1974 just this a small development happened then in rise of machine learning started in 1986 then artificial intelligence was regarded as a science in 1995 through the vision language and information mining techniques and gain popularity so all this happened so some development happened in 2006 consumer cameras offer face recognition software the so face recognition software came with the camera in 2006 that time i was studying machine learning in vit value so that was my starting point of learning machine learning prior to that i was also not aware about machine learning but machine learning fascinated me a lot during 2006 i worked on too many projects involving involving uh, neural networks programming that time deep learning was not a something called deep learning was not point we were only talking about neural networks i did a project in medicine also i along with my friend or one friend my friend was ankur malhotra so both of us uh, sat together and thought that we'll write a paper about uh, medicines like opd is there so in opd what happens we go to hospital and we talk a general doctor who is just opd kind of mix at opd some doctor sits there and will tell them his our problem that we are having uh, cough and sneezing and whatever some small problem pain in stomach whatever and based on symptoms he will write some medicine and he will also write some test and based on this right uh, tests and this medicines i will get some initial relief and based on our test the test that the doctor has written over there so based on that test what will happen we'll go and get it done and we'll get the report and after getting the report that doctor will that opd doctor will refer us to some specialist doctor and then we can go and get it checked to some specialist and get the personalized treatment on my particular problem so that happened so this opd concept was something where a doctor was sitting and uh, he used to be universal doctor he used to give all kinds of medicines everything so we made a report like that that will replace that doctor with a robot or a screen on which screen just like booking tickets we fill up all the information and we get the ticket will give all the symptoms all the problems will put in the screen and based on that symptoms um, will get uh, all the required basic medicines which is not going to be harmful to us and also will get uh, some prescription like uh, what test i should make so for that thing we need not consult a doctor or a somebody rather uh, a computer screen should be powerful enough to give all the facility i can give all details in the screen and i get the receipt and this can be time saving also i can do it from home also 
I can do it for 50 rupees also instead of spending 500 rupees to the doctor. So all this was the uh, solution that we brought forward. We presented it in uh, Durgapur club in NIT Durgapur. Uh, in NIT Durgapur, we presented this paper and uh, Durgapur club was the place where we presented this paper. So, uh, we did not get any prize for our presentations. Both of us, we did not get any prize, but it was uh, cited by their by the uh, by the judges and all. They cited that this paper was one of the most interesting paper because it it talked about the future. I don't know how far it is implemented today in medical science and all, but uh, it it was cited that this talked about future, but uh, current capacity of memory advancement and technology and all these things is not favoring us to implement this. So we are not giving any price to this paper, but uh, we are just uh, saying that this is the future technology. In future, we'll have something like this, which will going, which is going to help everybody. And you see today, uh, this is this is just not one thing. Like we are replacing EOPD with uh, means we are replacing OPD with EOPD. We are doing every single thing we are replacing with such kind of things. So even in medical, even in healthcare, even in biotechnology, life sciences, even my area of finance, risk management, and all those practices, everywhere, every every thing which is having manual inputs, everything which is cost intensive manually, and uh, it's also dependent on lots of data that can be replaced by a data engineering products that can be replaced by data science products. So all these things is happening. So that you can see here, man versus machine. So Gary Kasparov was defeated by Deep Blue Chess Computer in 1997. So this was the first time a computer defeated a man in chess. And then we thought that yes, computer can one day overcome man. But uh, chess is something if you will think, now what is the difference between a chess game and a card game, then also you will feel some insights. Like chess is everything you can, you, if you look at the chess board, you know everything in black and white. Its color is also black and white. And everything is black and white. There is nothing hidden. You know everything. So 100% it is logical thing. So 100% logical thing, there is nothing emotional connect with chess board, right? You can't think of any emotional thing. Data is not prime here because ultimately there are only 64 cells and a couple of uh, uh, things. So you know just everything and data is, it is not data centric. It is not data centric. It is all logical walking on 64 cells. So. This is quite uh, easy to understand that why computer can take over a man. But when it comes to the real life, if tomorrow machines will be replacing lots of human in job and it will happen that uh, we'll have less job, but we'll still have many more jobs in which we can manage machines. We can manage a pair of machine and a man. Chat GPT is coming today. It is writing essays, editorials, and everything for us. Lacks of people may get unemployed because of this. But again, don't think that lacks of people will not get another job. They will still get another job where they will be using this Chat GPT as their assistant and they will write even more creative things. They will be in the more advanced things. But you will have to study, you will have to be smarter than the machine. You will not have to be something like doing repetitive tasks every now and then and you will think that machine will not harm you. Machine, you can get uh, better than machine, not because you will have to be Gary Cosper and you will have to beat the blue, deep blue. You will have to be a simple man and you can beat deep blue also because you are emotionally intelligent. Machine is not emotionally intelligent. That intelligent machine is emotionally intelligent when it has lots of data. So don't give lots of data to machine. Don't express more about yourself in 
social media, Facebook and all. If something is publicly, you can give, you can give, you don't give your house address, don't give your mobile phone everywhere, just like that. This kind of things you can do. So you be intelligent, emotionally intelligent, that is more important in today's world. You be more creative, then you can do better than emotion. State of AI, you can see here, it's like uh, artificial intelligence is already proliferating in our lives. For example, you can see here, paper, so can recognize human faces and basic emotions. So it can recognize human faces and basic emotions. This is one such tool. Another is uh, the surgical system that can perform minimally invasive surgery. So this kind of tools, when you see this kind of tools are AI specific. This is robotics kind of tools also, Google AI. Google duplex, you can see here, that can make reservations or appointments over the phone. So all these things are something, they are going to do the mainstream job. So they can make you unemployed to some extent if you're doing an assistive job. But if you're doing a job, which is not assistive job, you're doing the main core job, then these things are going to be your companion. These things are not going to be something which is going to replace your job. So intellectuals will still be there in the mainstream job. You know, this robotics things can never touch their job, can never harm them. The only thing that uh, this robotics things can harm, this AI can harm, this ML can harm, is those people who are not doing anything creative, those who are not doing anything on their own, they are just doing assistive job. So those people will be um, feeling problems in terms of employment in another 10 years. So you have to upgrade yourself, you have to change the way you work. You have to be smarter than machine. Machine is trying to be a smart also. And you have to be a smarter than machine. And you can always be more smarter than machine. Anybody can be more smarter than any machine. This is because we have power to think. We have power to create. We have power to show creativity. Machine can show creativity as long as it gets data. If data is not allowing it to be creative, it won't be created. But we have power to think. We can create data on our own. Machine cannot create data on our own. Okay. So these things are something I wanted to point out. Now, what can AI do? So superhuman tasks. You can think of like uh, tasks that are very challenging for human, but easy for machines. So you can see here. Tasks that are very challenging for humans, but easy for machines, or you can talk about like data intensive tasks or repetitive tasks. So all these things are there. So I have talked about all these things several times before. Also, repetitive tasks should not, it's something that uh, a machine has to do. You are not supposed to do repetitive tasks every now and then. even if you are doing something repetitive task, you give a uh, give a creativity onto that, give a uh, creativity onto that and try to make it more uh, appreciable, right? So, otherwise one day one machine will come and that will replace you. You're doing repetitive task, very good, very nice, you're getting all appreciation day and night. One day a machine will come, now this machine will take this job and you can go to what will you do at that point of time? Where from you'll get the salary from the next month? So that will be good. So if you are creative onto that, you will always find a way to get adjusted with the machine. You can say that machine will also work, I will also work. Will work in coordination. What machine can't do, I will do. That way you can make adjustment. You can work alongside machine. And machine will be your assistant. You will not be the assistant of machine. 
data intensive tasks so data intensive task is like task involving analyzing large amount of data and looking for patterns and anomalies so task involving analyzing large amount of data and looking for patterns in so if it is uh, high, highly data intensive task obviously machine will do at the first hand it will give you summary analysis and dashboard all these things based on analysis dashboard and all you can take some decision that kind of things can be done and then superhuman tasks so it is said that tasks that are very challenging for humans but easy for machines obviously i told machines are machines there are lots of things machines can do very easily a machine can you know, build a bridge very easily a machine can you know, break the bridge also very easily human can't do that so there are lots of things machines can do very easily and humans can't do when it comes to our day to day task in a computer lab also there are many tasks in a computer lab or in a uh, software company where machines can do it very easily automation frameworks are there be it selenium java automation or selenium python automation or be it uh, even advanced format of automation all that machines can do very efficiently and very effectively humans can't do performance testing is something which we Uh, do performance testing on thousands and lakhs of servers at the same point of time in a virtual environment. This is possible because of machine only. We cannot do it practically by having thousands and lakhs of PC connected together, and we'll do some performance testing. We cannot do this practically because of machines. So in the virtual environment, we can do. It. so super human tasks are always done by machines and let that be done by machines we should supervise that we should monitor that we should report that we should analyze the final end result okay so advantages of ai we have to see here error reduction with incredible precision accuracy and speed ai has a low error rate compared to humans now this is about a direct comparison between a manual repetitive task that we were talking about something like uh, something like uh, writing a normal letter and sending it to uh, writing an article and publishing it so when i am talking about writing an article and publishing it now i am using chat gpt if i will ask chat gpt i will give it some few parameters that based on this 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 parameter i want to write an article in 3000 words right right there so chat gpt will write now in this writing it will have a very good flow of words very good flow of pronunciation everything will be there in such a sync that nobody will ever say that it is a wrong article you cannot publish it right there will won't be any grammatical mistake any structural mistake no mistakes in grammar nothing will be fine or very less mistakes will be there so this is uh, errors will be very less when you ask a machine to do the task but then there is something like uh, duplicacy will be there things will be taken from internet from some sources which might not be so verified something can be in contextual way it may be not appropriate so still human intervention is required and if you will edit the article that computer has written for you the chat gpt has written for you and then you can modify that yourself manually and that will take hardly one hour if you are writing the same 3000 words article yourself then it may take the whole day so instead of taking the whole day you gave the task to computer chat gpt it completed it is coming with very nice flow of language and everything now you are updating it so this way in coordination with the uh, 
chat gpt or robot you can uh, do your task easier and this is the comparison here if you will do it all alone there will be lots of error lots of things your expertise is needed if you are not expert you cannot do now even if you are less expert you can do with the help of the assistance of chat gpt so all these things are the advantages of ai digital assistants i already talked then difficult explorations ai can work in hostile environments that would injure or kill humans suppose we are talking to uh, go to moon and do something now human cannot go to moon every now and then right it is uh, very costly also costly affair as well as it is not so practical that means it is very difficult every time going there and working is difficult but uh, in such hostile environments i can send a robot controlled by various algorithms and all so that robot can go there and it can do the work. so this way artificial intelligence is helpful in doing some work in some environment where humans can't go right medical applications we have repetitive jobs no breaks so machines unlike humans don't need to sleep we talk about like machines unlike humans don't need to sleep rest take breaks or get injured so this all we already know so oh, humans needs break humans needs tea coffee break so that is all this so this is advantage of ai that uh, without break it can accomplish lots and lots of tasks because when you train a neural network algorithm sometimes the training require one full day two day like that sometimes training in neural network algorithm deep learning algorithm requires one or two day also and you cannot expect any break in this one or two day two day continuously network is running it is going back feed forward it is going back propagation so feed forward and back propagation is happening every now and then so many epochs of training is happening every now and then and it is continuously running for two days so there is no break in training and it is still continuing task after two days when it gets the result and if you are sure that you have made the setup very well in advance then those results are now going to work you for the next two three years without interruption and you are getting results from that result after for two three years two three years you do not need lots of human to do that task so this all things happens these are the advantages of ai application now coming to this uh, limitations of ai we have a very challenging to it's very challenging to capture all traits of human intelligence so it's the limitation of ai very challenging to capture all traits of human intelligence current focus of development lies with lucrative domain specific applications so you can understand these are the limitations of artificial intelligence that is being cited here limited ability with respect to the diversity of domain problems and unpredictability of failure in emergency situations in emergency situations you cannot expect that anything will hap happen quickly human can have a quick turnaround machines cannot have that quick turn maybe if we have made something fall back fall back recovery all this mechanism possible it can be but if otherwise if it is not in place then uh, quick turnaround is difficult for machines high cost of r&d and production so all those things are the limitation of ai ai is something as highest uh, um, say top advanced thing in currently electronics domain and its uh, cost and r&d is very very high so the recap of uh, machine learning we can see here little bit about machine learning also and then we'll close this discussion for today so machine learning will we have already seen right what is machine learning right so uh, this is supervised uh, machine learning is one such thing and unsupervised machine learning is another such thing <coughs> supervised means we have uh, some sets of uh, uh, some sets of data with us 
and with those sets of data we have some labeling of the data so suppose uh, i told you earlier also we have uh, uh, we have questions we have answers and we make the rules right so this questions are our data and answers are labels so with the questions as our data we are labeling our answers and then we train the network as we train the network we get the labels so as we get the labels we have it like this it is task it can be task driven it can predict the next value and all that things happens so this is supervised learning and then we have unsupervised learning in which we have uh, data we have questions we have data but we don't have levels even and then we want to correlate this data among themselves and try to cluster them out into few categories we generally don't call it as categories rather we call it as clusters so suppose there are data about uh students like you are students and there are other students who are learning finance from me there are other students who are learning poetry from me. so there are different different types of students and so one set of students learning data science another artificial intelligence another finance another poetry so we have four set of students but uh, i never classified them as the four uh, set of students because i always have some different different types of classes and some classes are at the juncture of the two subjects like data science and artificial intelligence can be at one junction and then data science and uh, uh, finance can be at one junction so somebody will learn uh, financial analysis using python so that way somebody is learning something too so my students are all from different different courses they are coming and i myself don't know who are which kind of student okay so what i will do i will uh, put all my students uh, records i have uh, i will uh, i will see their demography their all these figures like where they are coming from what they have studied in school colleges and all all this information i have about all the students i will put them together and after putting them together i will uh, put them in a k means clustering suppose k means clustering is one such clustering algorithm which is unsupervised algorithm so i pass them all the information to k means clustering and i found that uh, uh, four cluster is the best cluster that i am getting for my students uh, if i am making more than four clusters like 5 6 7 8 cluster then error in the overall ecosystem is uh, not getting minimized it is increasing and if i am having less than uh, four clusters also the error in the overall ecosystem is again getting higher so at four cluster i am getting the minimum error and i think that four cluster is the best setup so i found that four clusters i don't know myself the name of those clusters whether they are data science machine learning or poetry or whatever i don't know which students are there but i got four clusters and based on the four clusters i found many students coming in different different cl clusters so that's how i uh, divided all my students into four groups now there was nothing called supervised learning because i was not having any tagging related to anybody like which is from which course i did not give this information who is from which course i simply gave the information about all the demographics information about the students and i just uh, run k means algorithm which is distance based uh, clustering so based on distance uh, uh, k means clustering centroid based clustering it is so it uh, uh, simply figured it out which student is from which cluster and i got four clusters i can have three clusters also but uh, that way i will get to know that there are three types of students i have so that way i figured out everything so now uh, this classification or rather i will call it this clustering is an unsupervised way of uh, machine learning 
which is also very important. And when you learn uh, deep learning, which is part of uh, artificial intelligence, you also have the same set of things there. You can have supervised deep learning, you can have unsupervised deep learning, everything is possible in deep learning also. And then one thing comes as the reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning is something in which we learn from mistakes as it has been cited over here, you can see. So what do we do in the re reinforcement learning? So it's like we have to make a target like I have to reach some place. And then I start my journey from a start and I have to reach my journey to end. Just think of a video game that you are playing. In the video game you play and uh, you start from start and you have to reach the target end. And in the process, you, you, have, you are starting with some fuel, you are starting with some energy. And in the process, you gain, you, know, you fight with some uh, people on the way and you defeat them and as you defeat them you get more and more energy and with that you keep gaining more and more energy and the more energy you have you more effectively you more strategically you plan your next strategy and you defeat more and more people and you reach to your goal as earliest as possible and you win the game so in this entire thing, whenever you lose on the battle, you fight somebody and you lose, you lose some points. And when you lose some points, you get a feeling that, oh, I lost something. So that feeling of losing something will give you a, a indication that Next time, I am not supposed to lose on this kind of things. And you learn from the mistake that you are not going to lose on similar kind of things in the next time. This learning gets into your memory. And next time you make new mistake, you do not mistake, you do not commit the same mistake twice. And this is called a reinforcement learning. And the approach is there. I will rather this, I will not cover this part uh, uh, in detail in this course reinforcement learning. but. Uh, 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 if uh, because the uh, course is very short for two months only but we'll uh, take it forward uh, in some other uh, uh, session if required reinforcement learning because this also uh, uh, interests me a lot because I have myself worked on supervised learning and supervised learning a lot but uh, reinforcement learning I have a little practical exposure I, I myself have some lack of practical exposure so I am working on that so once I will do some project on reinforcement learning completely and I will have something ready to showcase, I will also include this in celebration. I will take it forward uh, in future. And maybe I can take it as a separate uh, session on reinforcement learning. So that all I can do. So this is an interesting thing. This is different from supervised and unsupervised learning. There is one more thing we call it semi-supervised means in which we have labeling. We don't have labeling. Everything is mixed and then we go with the strategy that is called a semi-supervised. Okay. So that is all there. This is all about uh, today's lesson. Uh, uh, anybody has anything to share can um, tell me. Otherwise, uh, uh, you can... You can just tell me anything you have.